Hello and welcome to Basics for Gamers presents Starfinder Basics of Starships Part 2 Roles and Phases. In the first part of this series we discussed the key differences between personal scale and starship scale combat and also dissected the stat block of a starship to better learn how the many features of a ship are represented in the game. In this video we're going to dive into how rounds of starship combat are structured We'll provide a very brief overview of crew roles aboard a starship and then provide an overview of how combat rounds are structured in a series of distinct phases that are very different from how personal combat unfolds. At the start of starship combat, each PC needs to state which role they will assume for their starship. As mentioned before, there are five roles which dictate when a player can act in a round and also what actions they can perform during the combat. The first role is Captain. Captains inspire their crew and they demoralize their enemies. There can only be one captain aboard a ship at any given time. The Engineer role is all about buffing the ship and managing its power and also repairing the ship's damage. Gunners are responsible for aiming and firing the ship's weapons. Generally speaking, each ship's weapon mount cannot fire more than one time per round and can't have more than one gunner each. So for example, the sample Kevlar Venture has two weapon mounts and two gunners assigned. Each of them can fire a different weapon, but they both can't control or fire the same weapon in the same round. Pilots fly the starship. That's pretty self-explanatory. Like captains, there can only be one person assigned to the pilot role at any given time, which isn't to say that there can't be two stations for a pilot and a co-pilot, but on any given round, only one of them has their hands on the stick in performing the duties of the pilot role. And the last role is the science officer. Science officers are responsible for balancing the ship's shields and managing information. They use the ship's sensors, detect and identify threats, assist in navigation and targeting, and so on. Each role aboard the ship is also directly associated with one of the ship's systems. If that system is high quality, it might grant a bonus to all of the skill checks being made by crew members of that associated role. And if the system is low quality or damaged, it may impose a penalty to those crew members' skill checks. The captain role is associated with life support. For example, as life support takes damage, the crew begins to panic which makes it more difficult for the captain to maintain order. This is represented in the game as the damaged life support system applying a penalty to all of the captain's actions. Engineers are associated with the ship's power core. Unless specifically noted, all engineer actions are modified by the condition of their ship's power core. Gunners obviously are associated with the weapons they use. Pilots are associated with the ship's engines. The more advanced the engines are, the higher a bonus the pilot might receive to their piloting checks. If the engines are damaged, those pilots are going to suffer a penalty to their checks. And science officers are associated with the ship's sensors and may receive a bonus or suffer a penalty to all of their skill checks depending on the type and condition of the ship's sensors. Each round, players are allowed to perform one action as defined by their chosen role, and some of these actions are labeled as push actions. A push action works the same as a regular action in Starship Combat, except that the necessary system for that action cannot have the malfunctioning or wrecked conditions. We will be discussing malfunctioning and wrecked in much greater detail during part 5 of this series, which is all about the basics of Starship Gunnery and damage. Also note that as players become more experienced, they gain extra resolve points that can be used exclusively in Starship Combat. At 8th level and again at 16th level, players gain one resolve point at the start of Starship Combat, and players may exceed their normal resolve point maximum when gaining these resolve points. And any resolve points gained this way for Starship Combat are lost at the end of combat if they are not used. As with personal combat, starship combat unfolds in a series of rounds 
but that's pretty much where the similarities end. Unlike with personal combat, each round of starship combat is broken up in a series of phases and in which phase a player may take their action and exactly what they can do with it is determined by the role that they have assumed. Each round of Starship Combat begins with Phase 0, Crew Rolls. During this zero phase, each player may either remain in their current role or adopt a new role. Players may do this in any order they wish, but no one may declare themselves as the captain or pilot if there is already another player in that role and able to perform those duties. If the captain or pilot is ever rendered unable to take actions, for example they're injured and knocked unconscious, then another player may assume those duties. Also note that by raw, no action is spent to change roles. Some GMs may require a player to run to the engine room of their ship if they want to switch to the engineering role, or have a gunner spend a move action to enter a gun well if they were the science officer during the previous round. That's entirely up to each GM to decide, but strictly by the rules you don't have to sacrifice any actions to change your role. After all the players have announced their role on the first round, or their wish to change roles on rounds after the first, then play moves into Phase 1, the Engineering Phase. During the Engineering Phase, all engineers in combat take their turn to manage their ship's performance. This all happens simultaneously and can be declared in any order wished. Once the engineers on all of the ships in combat, both allies and enemies, have performed their magic buffing to their ships, we then move to Phase 2, the Helm Phase. This is where things start to get a little bit counterintuitive. At the start of the Helm Phase, each ship's pilot rolls a piloting skill check. This functions similarly to an initiative check in that all of the ships are then ranked by this check total and that determines when they can act, but differs in two very, very different ways from personal combat. First, in the helm phase, the ships are ranked from the lowest to the highest. That's right, the pilot who rolled the worst on that piloting check for initiative declares their actions first, and the pilot who rolled the highest got the best total on their skill check, they go last. This difference from personal combat causes a lot of players to scratch their heads, but when you really think about it from a tactical perspective, it makes perfect sense. By making the lowest initiatives go first, they're at a distinct disadvantage in that they must turn and position their ships without knowing how their opponents are going to move. And when the last ship declares this movement, being the ship with the highest initiative, their pilot can see exactly how the rest of the field is positioned and then turn and face their ship and their weapons however is most advantageous to them. And the second difference from personal combat that you should be aware of is these pilot checks, although again very similar to initiative checks, they are rolled at the start of every single helm phase, which essentially means the initiative order will be re-rolled and change every single round. And this is very important because without this, a small nimble ship that wins initiative in the first round could just stay in the larger ship's blind spot every single turn with no hope for the larger ship to be able to turn the tables on them. After roles have been declared, the engineers have performed their actions and all of the ship's pilots have maneuvered their vessels, we then move to the final phase of starship combat, the gunnery phase. As one might expect, in this phase all of the ship's gunners aim and fire their weapons, but once again there is a little chicanery involved with how this initiative works. The gunnery phase is broken up into two segments. The first segment is for attacking and the second segment is for resolving those attacks. Action during the attack segment proceeds in the same order that ships declared their movement during the helm phase. So the lowest initiative attacks first and the highest initiative attacks last. 
When it's their turn, each gunner will select a target within range and arc of their weapon, roll their gunnery check to attack, and if the result of the check is a hit, they will roll their damage and note that damage to the side. For example, you might want to have some post-it notes handy to jot down the damage done into which ships, especially in really large battles with several different ships and a lot of gunners. Note that during the attack segment, no damage is applied. Even if those attacks hit, you do not apply the damage. Again, you just jot it down on a note and set it aside. Once all gunners on all ships have taken their turn, made their gunnery checks to attack, and noted to the side any possible damage, we then move into the resolve segment of the gunnery phase. In this segment, we flip the initiative order and we start with the gunners aboard the ship that rolled the highest initiative during the helm phase. This will also be the ship that declared its movement last and was also the last to declare their attacks. All damage rolled by that ship's gunners in the attack segment will now be applied to their targets. And then play proceeds down the initiative order until all damage has been recorded. This is a bit convoluted, but what this means is all ships get to fire and inflict damage even if they suffer enough damage themselves to be disabled or destroyed. This is meant to simulate the simultaneous nature of naval combat and will be further illustrated and discussed in detail in a future video that's all about the gunnery role. After all phases are complete, a new round begins back at phase zero, where players can choose to change their roles. Okay, let's bring that all together and look at how a round flows. At the start of every round, not just the first, players may declare or change their role aboard the ship. They can only take the captain or pilot roles if those are already vacant. Then, all of the engineers on every ship, both allies and enemies, take their turn. They can do so in any order as the result of their work will not matter until the next phase. And also, it's worth mentioning that the engineer actions being taken on ships other than the player ship are probably not going to be disclosed to the players. The players don't necessarily know if an engineer on an enemy ship is diverting power to the weapons or shields or engines or what have you. But still, GMs make sure you're rolling those checks for those ships during the engineering phase. After that, the helm phase begins by having every pilot make a piloting skill check, rank the results to create an initiative order for the engagement, then every pilot takes their action but they do so in reverse initiative order, with the lowest initiative going first and the highest initiative declaring their action last. When all of the pilots have acted, combat proceeds to the gunnery phase. And again, the gunnery phase is divided into two segments. In the first segment, all gunners take their actions in reverse initiative order. If they score hits, jot down the damage, and set that aside for a moment. After all of the attacks have been rolled, go back to the damage notes that you made during the first segment and apply the damage to their targets in normal initiative order with the ship that had the highest initiative applying its gunner's hits first and the ship with the lowest initiative applying their hits last. So far, we've reviewed the phases where engineers, pilots, and gunners act which may have a few of you wondering about science officers and captains. Science officers take their action during the helm phase, and although there is no rule dictating exactly when during that phase they take their turn, I find it often is easiest for science officers to declare their actions immediately before their pilot takes their turn so that the pilot has as much information as possible when they make their decisions and captains are able to take their turn at the start of Phase 1, Phase 2, or Phase 3, depending on what they wish to accomplish. If they want to encourage their engineers to perform a miracle, then they act at the start of the engineering phase. And if they want to open handling frequencies and trick the enemy into turning the wrong direction, 
than they would act at the start of the helm phase. Despite being able to act during three of the phases, captains are still limited by only having one action per turn, and remember that because their actions modify other roles being made, captains always act at the start of their chosen phase before any other role goes. That's the basic structure of one round of starship combat, and then the process repeats itself again with a new round beginning with players changing their roles at phase zero if they wish to do so. In this video we provided a brief overview of how starship combat unfolds, and this will be built upon over the rest of this series. At the start of combat, each player must declare the role that they will assume aboard the starship. Captains inspire the members of their crew and confuse or demoralize their enemies. Engineers buff their ship by managing power and repairing damage. Gunners aim and fire the ship's weapons. Pilots fly the ship. And science officers balance the ship's shields and manage information. They use sensors to detect and identify threats, assist navigation, scan planets to learn details about them, and so on. Starship combat unfolds in a series of rounds, each of which are broken up by a number of distinct phases that dictate when each role can act. In phase zero, each player is allowed to change their role aboard the starship. They can do this in any order they wish, and by raw this does not require any actions to be spent, but GMs may require players to spend their move actions to physically move to a new location aboard the ship. Also note that a player cannot assume the captain or pilot roles unless those roles are vacant. There cannot be more than one captain or one pilot. Phase 1 is the engineering phase. During this phase, all engineers in the combat, both allies and their enemies, take their turn to manage their ship's performance. This all happens simultaneously and can be declared in any order that is wished, and GMs may want to keep secret the results of any engineering checks on enemy ships. Once the engineers on all the ships in the combat have performed their actions, we move on to phase two, the helm phase. At the start of each helm phase, the pilot of each ship makes a piloting skill check, which are then all sorted into an initiative order. This is done at the start of every single helm phase, and therefore you essentially reroll initiative every single round. The pilots then take their turns flying and repositioning their ships. This is done in reverse initiative order, with the pilot who rolled lowest on their piloting skill check going first, and the pilot who rolled the highest declaring their actions last. There is a significant advantage to going last, as that pilot will know exactly how all of their enemies are positioned before they make their move. The third and final phase of Starship Combat is the Gunnery Phase. This phase is further divided into two segments. The first is the Attack Segment. In this segment, the gunners of all the starships declare their actions in reverse initiative order, the same order used during the Helm Phase. They make their attack rolls, and if they score hits, they roll the damage, but do not apply that damage yet. Instead, you note it down on a sticky note or a scrap piece of paper and just set it aside. Once all the gunners have made their attack rolls, we then begin the second segment of the gunnery phase, and this is the resolution segment. In this segment, we apply the damage that was rolled and set aside during the attack segment. This is done in normal initiative order, therefore the attacks made by the gunners aboard the ship with the highest initiative score have their damage applied to the enemies first, and the shots fired by the ship with the lowest initiative are resolved last. And note that attacks and damage were already rolled during the attack segment, so there's no taking them back now. Those shots have already been fired, which means all damage counts, even if the ship that fired the shots is destroyed before their damage is resolved. This is meant to simulate the simultaneous nature of naval combat, and you can kind of visualize it like a scene from any classic pirate movie. Two giant ships come alongside of each other and fire all of their broadside cannons at the same time. 
in game terms, one of those ships won initiative and fired first, but that doesn't change the outcome. They both get to fire their rows of cannons and end up obliterating each other. After all phases are complete, a new round begins back at phase 0 when players may choose to change their roles again. Also remember that the science officers are going to take their actions at the beginning of the helm phase, and captains may take their action at the beginning of either phase 1, phase 2, or phase 3 before any other role takes their turn regardless of initiative. With that, we'll bring this video to a close. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like, and don't forget to click that subscribe button and bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Leave us a comment letting us know what topics you would like to see us cover in the future, and we can always be reached through our Twitter and Facebook pages too. If you would like to use some of the maps that we feature in our videos with your own games, you can find them at Maps of Mastery and Zero Hour. Links to those sites may be found in the description. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon with more basics for your favorite tabletop games.